What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be a spoiler free, mostly. Maybe some minor teases. Again, teases for episodes 9 and 10, but mostly an overall spoiler free review for from season 2 from MGM Plus, previously known as Epics, I believe. But uh just jumping into season 2. Season 2 of this show, which was from the same creators of Lost, is more or less now that i finished it all all 10 episodes i would say a very significant dip in quality so much so that i am going to only rate it a star less from the previous season which i give an 8 out of 10 i'm just gonna get that out of the way up front i feel like in the writing department this season we have kind of dropped the ball there's a scene in season two with Ellis and Boyd where I'm like, this seems to be the writer's way of recognizing that the mystery is moving slowly. And it gives me hope that it means a bigger picture is actually planned and not a writing as we go type of thing. But then as the season kept on progressing, I'm like, I'm losing faith that they actually have any concrete plan. But hopefully I'm proven wrong now that moment i'm addressing many of you probably already know it because it happened earlier on in the season ellis is basically yelling at boyd for returning to town with no answers and being at the same spot they've always been and now that i'm done with season two that moment just kind of rings very true for the overall season i feel like season two is something i can easily see myself revisiting but it's again a clear dip in quality in terms of just majorly the writing department just as I was getting invested in around the characters we met during the inaugural season, we have now a slew of newbies that give the narrative an overcrowded feel to it, sadly. The season kicked off with the fallout from the failure of Jim's radio concept. Victor and Tabitha go deeper into the tunnels, and Tabitha's given a new arc after emerging from these tunnels related to these dusty dead kids. Now, Boyd is also returning to town. Christy's fiance that she's been waiting for shows up. And then a good chunk of melodrama carries the season for a few episodes or so. Momentum really just starts to pick up during episode eight, where we dig deeper into the character of Victor, who I believe has been here the longest. Scott McCord's acting in this episode is truly heartbreaking when considering Victor's childlike nature and the Eloise revelation that we know we all discover. For those of you who don't know who Eloise is, that's again because this is spoiler free. You'll find that out when you watch down or when you go and sit down, I should say, and watch from season two. While I'm watching episode eight i'm seeing all these meaningful conversations start to happen the weird dreams that have been happening all season are finally addressed and it's like okay why can't every season or why can't every episode be like episode eight a slow burn that still unravels pieces of this puzzle that started being assembled back during season one now finding that balance i think would have kept season two on par with season one again mostly in the writing department Season 2 is more interested in trying to focus on developing these characters, which is a slight improvement from Season 1 for their efforts, but I'm going to have to admit that the inclusion of the newbies gave the writers too much to juggle and not enough is worth investing in the same way as Season 1. Everything again feels, it feels overly crowded now with the ensemble that we have. I mean, even coming out of season one, going into the second season, I was intrigued to spend more time with our current residents, which the season does offer. And the time spent with them is very much appreciated, especially Donna, who I think is a standout this season. Uh, but that doesn't eliminate the fact that a focus issue exists due to the newbies who are more or less just added on dead weight to me, especially Randall, who is beyond frustrating thanks to AJ Simmons being a very talented actor. However, more specifically, this character is written in a way that just makes him a problem and a distraction from our core mystery. Although I will admit his actions during episode 9 are especially bothersome, but also help create a very gripping sequence with Donna, Boyd, and Jim in the woods. Episode 9 is able to amp up the Nightmare on Elm Street vibes with all of the characters trying to protect each other from falling asleep. Elgin, one of our other newbies, reveals details about his freak out on the bus that happened back in the very first episode of season 2. The music box threat grows and we continue to dive deeper into what exactly is happening. Plus, by the end of episode nine, three characters are left in critical condition, one of which has been here since the very first episode uh, from season one. Prior to the last three episodes, though, characters just seem to be written in a way that avoids addressing any important discoveries for so long during the season. I'm all for figuring out a mystery by discussing it among other viewers with clues given in the show. But I don't want to see this show become pretty little liars or end up like lost perhaps it's fair to say that season two's other big issue is pacing too much talking and little meaningful story progressions i will say that from continues to do a great job at building tension with most of it being present during episodes eight and nine eight nine and a little bit of ten stand out this season for me definitely 
was involving Boyd's encounter with Smiley in the deten in the detention department, the tunnel discoveries with Victor and Tabitha, the score remains eerie, it aids in heightening the stakes for certain sequences while also providing comfort during others. Uh, Harold per per Perano delivers another phenomenal performance throughout the entire season with his work in episode 10, including some of my favorite moments for the character of Boyd. Episode 10 also includes a very eventful event i'll say with the boy in white for tabitha and a cliffhanger that just adds another complex layer to this puzzle because now even more questions exist than answers being provided all in all season two is is for now something i'll have to deduct points from because it's building up too much without going or building up too much and going even bigger by the end of episode 10 but the smaller questions are still unanswered so from season two while again i found it enjoyable i love that we got to spend time with our characters from season one but the introduction of these newbies which i think was way too many clearly is showing to me that they didn't know how to really juggle all of that and give everybody enough opportunities to breathe and become something worth investing in. Thus, I was left with an overcrowded feeling. I thought that the episodes were completely being dragged on and everything felt like filler at times. Yes, little by little, there are small things being thrown out there and it's fun to theorize as to what's going on. But then when all of that is crammed into the finale with a lot of exposition dumping and even still some major things that you might be expecting to have answered by the end of season two, don't expect them to be answered. They're still dragging this out and it's going to continue into season three. I'm excited to see where season three does go, though, because, again, this is still a very interesting concept. I just think that season two didn't really focus, didn't really find that balance between being mellow giving us a mellow drama that's compelling while also still unraveling the mystery the mystery is kind of taking a a back page is being put to the sidelines for us to develop the characters which is fine but if you hadn't added so many new characters maybe you wouldn't have to feel that you needed to do this anyway but who do what do i know maybe there is a clear plan that will start to become more clear with season three onward you guys can let me know what you think about from season two down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and there's a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me know if there's any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video